Hey guys, it's Christy and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me. Today we're going to be reviewing the new Pat McGrath Mothership 11 Sunlit Seduction Palette. I am so excited for this one. So before we get into it, I hope you'll consider subscribing to my channel before you leave. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoy and let's get into it. I can barely contain my excitement. So I know there's been a lot of chatter surrounding this palette. A lot of people are very disappointed that it is a very pink palette. I totally get it. I personally am incredibly excited. I love Pat McGrath. I love pinky tone shades. Honestly, her earlier palettes where she did have all, a lot more color, greens, uh, I think some blues, things like that, those are more intimidating for me. So looking at these pinky tone palettes, I'm excited. It works for me and clearly it works for the brand because they keep coming out with them. So I'm very excited for this one, but I will be showing you some comparisons of things that are similar in my collection in case you have them already so you can decide whether this one is kind of worth the splurge. So this is available now August 2nd on her website. I did end up getting access to this like a week ago. There was some sort of glitch where it was available with a 30% off discount code. I did happen to snag it then and then it came back available I think maybe Friday night in limited quantities and then the same thing happened yesterday. It was a very, very strange release, but that being said, here we are. This is the new Mothership 11 Sunlit Seduction eyeshadow palette from Pat McGrath. This does have an 18 month shelf life. This is also made in Italy, which is standard for all of her motherships. The box of this is very, very beautiful, although it does look very similar to, I wanna say Divine Rose 2 and Utopian Dream, both of which I have, so I will show you side by side. This does also retail for $128 US or 173 Canadian, so very, very pricey. Let's get into the most exciting part. Here is the palettes, that same black acrylic packaging as all of her other palettes. And this is the color story. This color story does something to my heart. I will say the mattes look like things we already have in her palettes, but these four on the end, which are typically her special shades in her motherships, these four are doing something really special, particularly this little threesome right here. I am very, very excited. So let's look at some swatches and then we're gonna do two different looks. I'll do one on each eye and then I'll show you some comparisons towards the end. So I went ahead and swatched these all uh, just because I'm really bad at swatching in general. But this first shade here is Skin Tense Radiance and I would say she has a shade like this in every single one of her palettes, like every single one of her motherships. I'm pretty sure start it with a shade sort of like this, but I think this is one of my favorites given that it actually has a bit of a pinky shift to it. I think that's beautiful. Then we have Nude Rose which is a very creamy matte. Then there is Hypnotic Bronze. Then we have Extreme Vermilion Dusk. Then we have Copper Dawn. And then Sienna Mystique. Now we're getting into the special shades on the end. And we have Astral Pink Fetish, which so far I think is my favorite in the whole palette. Then there is Astral Amethyst Allure, and this is really pretty. In the palette, it looks very purple, but swatched out, it really didn't seem as purple as it did in the pan. Then we have Blitz Crimson Ecstasy. This one feels extremely creamy to the touch, and when I swatched it out, it was definitely a bit more of a chunky, foiled sort of formula, but it felt incredibly creamy to the touch, and when I went over it a few times, it did smooth out. It kind of reminded me of the Ulta Lustrous Foil shadows that I like so much, and that they are very, very chunky, but the shine is stunning. And the last shade is Astral Gilded Aura, which is just a beautiful gold. All right, let's get into creating some looks. So I will show you comparisons toward the end, but what I can tell you right now is I found a very, very close dupe for this palette. So I have already set my eyes with the Ultra Ego eyeshadow base. She did release a primer with this palette, but it wasn't part of the early glitch that I took advantage of. So I only got the palette I was pretty excited about the eyeshadow base, but I think I'll just wait until there's a sale and I'll grab it then. Uh, I don't want to place a special order just for the primer. Okay, very predictable of me. Let's start with Nude Rose in the crease. So I will be having 
I will for sure have a multiple looks one palette video with this one up probably early next week, potentially on the weekend, but I'm thinking it's going to be very early next week. But we will do two looks today. This shade is really pretty. It is definitely brighter than I initially thought it was. I thought it was going to be a little bit more of like a muted sort of rose. But again, these are shades she has in most of her palettes. Uh, the palette that I found that I will tell you about toward the end is not a Pat McGrath palette, but it is very, very close. Okay, next I'll take Sienna Mystique. I'm going to do this one in the outer corner. And because she does sort of the same mattes in every palette, it's almost like you kind of end up starting every look the same way. Well, at least I do. This shade is pretty and it's definitely giving a little bit more depth. Very, very pigmented, also very creamy to swatch. I think I'm gonna take Copper Dawn. I'm gonna take that on a finger and I'm going to put this on the center of the lid. And this is really, really pretty. So far, these are definitely up to par with her usual quality because one thing I notice is that I've got three shades on here and I feel like the way they work together, it looks like I put in so much more effort. I'm going to take a brush and I am going to take just a tiny bit of Hypnotic Bronze. And I just want to use this one to sort of mesh Copper Dawn into those mattes. And then I want to take Skin Tense Radiance. I want to take this one on the inner corner. All right, just blending around those edges. And then we're going to go into Astral Gilded Aura. This one seems to have a very sheer base to it, but I want to know. I'm going to pop this. Oh, that is pretty. I guess I'm kind of covering Copper Dawn, but at the same time, because this one doesn't have much of a natural base, I'm not mad at that at all. I'm just going in with a little bit of Hypnotic Bronze again, just to mesh that one into the crease shades. Definitely a ton of follow, but that is to be expected. I do expect that with her palettes, especially the Blitz Astrals. That shine makes me so happy. I love the shine from that one. I just want to add a little bit more of Skin Tense Radiance in the inner corner. I just feel like it could be a little bit brighter. See, I love that. Super, super simple, but also totally a look I would wear daily. That's one thing I like about this palette. And even though it's all pink, I wear pink. So it's something I'm going to wear and reach for and enjoy. Okay, let's go to the other eye. So on this eye, we focused a little more on the coppers and the golds. This eye, we're going to go with the pinks because I have to. I'm going to start with New Rose again. Just going in a little bit extra with it before blending it out. I do want this look to have some pink focus. That Astral Gilded Aura shade, the Blitz Astral I put on the top over here, it is gold, but it has like a pink reflect in it. I keep catching that. It's an interesting shade because my eye is naturally drawn into it. I love that. And I think I'm going to actually drag Nude Rose all over the lid as well, just to help me create that pinky toned base. I feel like especially coming out with such a pink palette right now is, is kind of a smart move because we have the whole Barbie craze right now and everybody is reaching for pink. So maybe, I don't know, maybe this will do really well. That being said, I would love to see Pat come out with a green themed palette. I do love greens. Um, maybe something, I know she's got a lot of purples, but maybe something a lot more purple focused. Something, I don't know, but uh, I would definitely love to see something green. Not brown, not copper, not pink, just greens. I think that would be really interesting. I mean, Natasha Denona can do it. I don't see why Pat can't. I don't know if I said I'm just taking Sienna Mystique. I sort of look like I have pink eye at the moment, but trust the process. I'm going to take Astral Pink Fetish because this shade is just speaking to my heart. And I'm going to take it all over the lid. Ooh, that is pretty. That is so pretty. Oh, it's beautiful. This is definitely a Barbie eyeshadow look if I have seen one. So beautiful. Look at that shine. Oh. 
so pretty. Next, I'm going to take the littlest bit of Blitz Crimson Ecstasy. I just want to use that to kind of mesh that in with the crease. I do not think this will work well with a brush. This was very, very creamy. Yeah, the brush really isn't picking anything up. So I'm going to have to go in with a finger. Like I mentioned, this seems to be a very, very textured type of shade. It's got it looks like it's going to be very, very foiled. It's going to, it's going to pack a punch, but because it's that foiled metallic and it is also very creamy and it's reminding me of those Ulta shadows, I just want to show you the trick that I kind of figured out. Um, once I saw that this one was very, very smooth on swatch, what I do is I pick a little bit up and I rub my fingers together. So I essentially swatch it on my hand. And that gives you the shine, but takes away the texture. And then now I can put it on my lid and it's not gonna be nearly as textured. Okay, and it's a little deeper than I wanted, but I'm gonna blend it out on this corner. And I'm just gonna take a little bit more of Astral Pink Fetish, just over here. And that's just a little trick I figured out with the Ulta shadows. And I know it just worked really well with this shade as well. So if you do have texture lids or more mature lids, that little trick will get you that extreme shine from those types of foiled shades without the texture. I'm going to take a little bit more of Skin Tense Radiance on the inner corner. And now I'm going to, I'm going to pop off camera. I'll put on some mascara and then I'll be right back to share my final thoughts and then I'll show you some comparisons. All right, so here are the two final looks and I gotta say, I love both of them. So first we played with the more coppers and golds and I think it's really, really pretty. And then over here we went full Barbie pink and I also love it. So it's safe to say this is definitely my type of color story. I found all of the shades that I used today were performing completely up to par. This one I can't wait to use in my next try on because again, it looks very purple in the palette, but when I swatched it out, it wasn't so purple. And I'll definitely be using this one in a future video as well. Otherwise, I pretty much used all of these today. And I really, really love how the looks turned out. I'm probably going to be starting every single look the same way with this one, deepening with this one, and then maybe adding in some of this. But I love the way the looks turned out. I love how shiny and shimmery these are. The uh, Astral Pink Fetish shade, it has my heart. I knew it would. Uh, from the moment I saw it in photos, I opened it up here and I saw it and I was right. I just knew. Um, so I'm very, very pleased with that as well. But as promised, let's look at some comparisons. So first I'll show you the most similar motherships and then I'll get into some of the other comparisons I have. So first I wanted to share Divine Rose 2. There's definitely some similarities, particularly with those uh, more copper bronze shades. Very, very similar, especially with those first six shades. There's a lot of similarities. When it comes to the Blitz Astrals, I really don't think there is a lot of similarities at all, but definitely the first six shades a lot of similarities. Okay, next I have Divine Rose 1 and there really isn't as many similarities with this one as I thought. Maybe again with the first six but otherwise I really don't think Divine Rose 1 is as similar to this one as I originally thought in my mind. Probably one of the most similar is Utopian Dream. Um, Utopian Dream has definitely got some brighter, poppier shades. So again, not identical, but with the more, we'll say, boring shades in the palette, definitely, definitely got some similarities. The mattes, some similar, some of these more bronzy tones, also pretty similar. So I mean, if you have Utopian Dream or Divine Rose 2, is this one a must? Probably not. Getting into some more similar, similar options, I pulled from the Pat McGrath Love Collection, the Iconic Infatuation Palette, and this one is very similar when you compare it to the first six. So again, if you have this one, you already pretty much have the first six shades. I'll pop up a photo when I was doing some swatches, so they're not identical, but I feel like they would be similar enough on the eyes. Next, I pulled out from 
the 2022 holiday collection, the Celestial Nirvana palette in Nude Allure. So this is one of the quints that came out for holiday last year. And again, not identical, but again, I think you could create a very similar vibe. I could definitely get very similar to what I did today with this. There is that, of course, you don't get the mattes in here, but because the mattes in the Sunlit Seduction palette, I feel like are just really not unique. I feel like if you had this and any of the others, I feel like you could do, I feel like you'd be okay. Basically, when it comes to if you have any of the other motherships I mentioned or iconic infatuation, you pretty much have this first six pan right here. You have those. Some version of them, but you have those essentially, and it's going to look very similar on the eyes. What I've been dying to show you though is a palette in my collection that is very, very similar, and I didn't think of it until I opened this palette today. So we had the new Sunlit Seduction, and then I pulled the Patrick Ta Major Dimension 2. This is not absolutely fully identical. Obviously with Patrick Ta, you get the two cream shades in the Pat McGrath. You do have those, um, that more amethyst kind of purple shade here, but let me pop up the swatches side by side so you can see what I'm talking about and you don't think I'm crazy. I was able to get very, very close to Sunlit Seduction. So I do think if you have the Major Dimension 2, you probably could safely skip this one. I also think the formula in this is phenomenal. Maybe if you have this one and say Nude Allure, you definitely don't need Sunlit Seduction, in my opinion. Even if you just have the Major Dimension 2, I don't think you need Sunlit Seduction. The only thing you're really essentially missing is the Amethyst shade, and I don't know if it's that special. I will definitely be playing and creating different looks in my next video, and I will definitely be using the Amethyst shade a lot more to see if it's really unique. I don't think it is based on swatch, but I just wanted to mention if you have the Patrick Ta, you essentially have this. Let's get into my final thoughts on the palette. So I do think this palette is super stunning. I am so excited I bought this on launch. The day she revealed this, I kind of, the second I saw it, I knew I wanted it. This is a color story that I love, that I enjoy, that I will definitely reach for, that I will have fun playing with. And once I saw that, I also said to myself, you know, it's really not new. I think people are going to be upset. And there was a lot of people that were still upset. There's a lot of people that are still really excited because this is the type of color story they go for. If you're a Pat McGrath collector, I can see you wanting to grab this just to have the whole entire set, which is fine. If you love pinks, I can see you wanting this. If you don't have any of the other palettes I mentioned today, maybe this is perfect. I do love this in my opinion and for my taste. I think this is one of the more wearable motherships in my opinion. I think Divine Rose 1 is probably the most wearable followed by this one and then Bronze Seduction. I think this is beautiful. I love it. I love this initial six pan. I just think it's easy. It's very everyday. You can create something very, very wearable and simple but you can go so glam and sparkly with these shades up here. I think it's beautiful. I think her quality is up to par. I think it's stunning. This is a color story that really makes my heart very, very happy. And again, I love both looks I create with this one. Initially trying out other motherships in her collection, I am trying to step outside my comfort zone a little bit. And often enough, I don't like the first looks I create. With this one, I automatically love the first two that I did. So to me, that says something that does speak volumes. But overall, my first impression of the Pat McGrath Mothership 11 Sunlit Seduction is that I personally absolutely love it so far. I don't think you need it. I think we've looked at some good comparisons. I think if you really want it, I would absolutely wait for a sale. I would do that anyway. I would absolutely wait for a 30% off sale. She does run a lot of those throughout the year. So I would definitely just wait for that. But if you are wanting to be talked out of it, then I would say you probably already have this in your collection. And if you have the Patrick Ta, I would definitely maybe dig that one out and play with it a little bit and then decide if you still want to order this. I think it's beautiful and I'm very, very pleased to have it in my collection. Let me know down below if you're picking this one up. Are you passing? 
let me know. I love to hear from you guys so, so much. If you're new here, I hope you'll consider subscribing before you go. I do upload at least three new videos every single week. Thank you again so very much for watching, and I will see you in my next one. Bye!